Okay, so this demo is how to mix some skin tones up with a limited color palette. Um, starting with an underpainting, just using some raw umber and some turpentine to get the drawing and the structure of the face um, laid out. So what I'm gonna do is I have yellow ochre, I have cad red, alizarin crimson, an ultra blue, and some white. Um, so basically I'm gonna use the yellow ochre, cad red, and ultra blue for the majority of it. And if I need pinker tones, I'll use some red, cat, uh, alizarin crimson. So I'm gonna start with a base using the yellow ochre with a little bit of the cad red. Cad red goes a long way, so you don't need too much of it. Mix that up. I'm going to add a little of the ultra blue to neutralize that orange. So it's not so bright and intense. And again, the ultra blue goes a long way too. You don't need too much of it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a series of values as well as colors just using this limited color palette here. So once I have a base value, I then can start adding white kind of to see what the color is and to know if I need to add more yellow or my cad red, but I do want to have a lot of variation in my colors. Then I'll add a little more white and just to make varying values. I'm gonna to wanna to make a color tone that has more yellow in it because the highlights tend to have more of a yellow ochre in them. So I'm gonna just add just the littlest amount of cad red. I'm not even do much there. So that this color shade stays a little bit more on the yellow ochre side. Add some white to get my lighter tones. And then I'm going to want to have some pinker tones in there too. So I'll start with the yellow ochre, I'm running out a little bit and mix up a tone that is a little bit more pink in there. Remember that cad red's a nice color for transitions from shadows to highlights. So when I have some of that cad red, there's pinker tones in there. Now I could start with this when I get started on my painting, but I'll probably end up mixing along the way as well. And I'll probably want even a lighter tone. So I'm gonna keep that pure white. Okay, so now that I have some basic colors mixed up, I'm gonna start applying. So when I apply oil paint on a face, um, remember oil paint is the wonderful properties of oil paint is that it blends um, a little bit easier than acrylic paint, um, but that also can be a drawback because sometimes you blend and blend and blend and you blend into an area that you don't want to be blended. So I'm gonna start with my darker shades and my darker values. I'm gonna just kind of lightly scumble some of this darker value on top of what I already have here. And I can kind of establish that that's looking a little too orange for me. So I know that I'm gonna go back in and add a little bit more this ultra blue, just to get a nice dark shadow color. That looks better. And the shadows, since I have this underpainting, I can be a little bit more transparent my brush off a little bit there. I'm actually going to add a little bit more blue because I want a nice neutral dark shadow color. There we go. That's better. So 
So I'm just kind of plugging in on top of what I already have with that, that raw umber. I'm just kind of stumbling in there, kind of just rubbing it in. Keeping in mind, I don't want to lose the form of the face. Okay, I want to really keep that form. That's why it's great to start with. If you're working from a photograph of portrait is making sure that there's a good sense of lighting, light to dark on the face when you start out. It'll really help you kind of keep that sense of form. Okay, then I'm gonna grab some neutral and I'm just gonna kind of blend that in there. At this point, I might want to get a little of that red, maybe even a little bit brighter than that, to place in between my highlights and my shadows and just kind of go around and add that in first as this transition between my highlights and my shadows. Remember noses, ears. A little bit redder. That nice cad red glow between those shadows and the highlights helps to create so it doesn't you don't create any pastiness going from your highlight into your shadow, any gray tones. I'm gonna keep the skin warm. So if you can see I kind of plugged those reds in there already. I'm going to kind of my next values, my next value. I'll start to plug that in. I'm working without a photo reference, so I'm just kind of making this up as I go. That's okay. Just knowing that I'm going to be going to them some extreme highlights pretty soon. So now I'm going to start to just plug in and clean off my brush. I just have a paper towel here to clean this brush off. I'm just going to smush it on my palette paper. I'm going to grab some of those yellow ochres. those lighter highlights and start kind of just laying them in. Remember, I'm kind of just like laying values next to each other. Um, I'm not necessarily blending them right now. I'm just kind of laying them out because then I'm gonna go back in and then feather all those values together. The top lip usually protrudes here, so that's going to be lighter. No, yeah, I hear protrudes, so that's going to be going to hit that with the highlight. So you can see that I'm starting to kind of block in. This is where I'm gonna say, okay, it's looking very neutral right now. I think it needs a little bit more pink tones. So I'm gonna mix up a little bit more of that cad red, some of those pink tones. And add a little brightness here and there. Maybe a little more brightness to the nose. A little more brightness to that transition. highlights in these shadows. So we're gonna add a little pinks to the lips. Okay, 
And you just want, you don't want to look like you're wearing wax lips or the figure looks like it's wearing wax lips so that mouth tends to blend in a little bit here to that highlight. And then as I go, that's when I can take a clean brush and I could start to feather because again, oil paint stays wet, so you can blend and blend and blend. But watch what happens. If I don't, if I want this to stay yellow here, I want to be careful I have a clean brush because if not, I could blend that yellow away and lose it. So it's, it's important you have a clean brush that's not loaded with paint when you want to do these kind of like featherings and blend and blending the oil paint. So I might want to make this a little less harsh and softer. So I can feather that together. And then I would just continue looking at my photo reference, picking out colors, picking out tones. You know that this side of the mouth is going to be a lot darker. The light, how the light is hitting it on the other side. Eventually, I'm going to kind of fast forward here. I could grab just pure white and really pull out some brighter highlights. Again, I'm really jumping forward here, but anywhere that those kind of like highlights stick out cheekbones, the um, your nose, the tip of your nose, or your mouth or your brow bone. You can start to kind of really plug in those brighter highlights, getting more of a sense of form. Okay, so again, using just a simple palette of the yellow ochre, the cad red, the ultra blue. I didn't even really grab the Lizard Crimson at this point, but if I wanted some cooler um, reds in there, I could plug that in as well. Um, and then just starting, making sure when you start that underpainting, you have a nice structure down, you have the form, because then it's just applying, it's like coloring in a coloring paint book. You're just applying the darks, the mid-tones, the highlights, blending as you go, making sure those cad reds or those are there as a transition. Again, if not, you might get a pasty look there. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this oil painting video by Mrs. Moriarty.